Okay, everybody, you know, good evening. This is uh, Colin Go, and I have with me uh, here Colin E. You know, so today we are running episode four of the property market analysis. So uh, today, you know, welcome on board for all of you who uh, just tune in right now. You know, we have a little bit of technical discussion just now, so maybe you heard some some of our conversation. But we are so excited to be sharing. Wow, you know, uh, today's topic with you. So last week, what happened was uh, Colin E was sharing um, his take on where to find undervalued property, and essentially, if you have heard us talk about last week's topic, you will understand that you know the the undervalued properties are not really the ones you can find in listing sites such as Property Guru. You really have to reframe your mind to think about. Uh, getting or finding those uh, undervalued property in another way. Okay, so today, uh, due to popular popular demand, uh, what Colin E has done is essentially gotten uh, some examples to show you essentially which are the ones that we can look at. And uh, later, you know, if you if you stay tuned all the way you'll be able to find out exactly which are the ones that uh, he is uh, going to recommend maybe and also you know which are the ones to avoid and uh, for those of you who are watching and you have a question on whether you know some projects that you have eye on today is it going to be an undervalued property that you can consider then maybe ask that question we if we have time we will answer them um, so key in all your questions in the comments box below. Once again, thank you so much for all of you who have signed in. So Colin, you know, what are we going to talk about today? Okay, uh, thanks Colin Go and uh, good evening everybody uh, who just joined in uh, this uh, Facebook live session, right? Uh, so tonight, uh, continuing from last week's topic, okay, we are going, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, finding undervalued properties. I think this is something which a lot of people want to know. And tonight, I will I will be specifically sharing um, some bad examples, bad ways, that bad mistakes that uh, buyers potentially can make. And of course, I will also give uh, some positive examples as well. Right. So yeah, that is what we'll be doing tonight. Mm. Great. Okay. So, you know, Colin, I think what we can begin with is really giving a very quick recap of uh, what some of our viewers actually missed from last week. Shall we do that? Okay, sure. So, um, okay, let, let me, uh, maybe I, I just uh, go to my slides, right? Uh, mm. Thanks, uh, Colin Go. So, um, let me share my slides for tonight, so that at least you have got something to refer to. It's easier for you. Okay, so I believe that you can, can see my slides now. Um, let me go to the first page. Right. Okay, so this is this is what I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, property market analysis and how to spot properties that are undervalued by 300,000. Now, you may think that 300,000 is an uh, impossible figure that, that is not possible at all that you can buy properties at such a big discount. So if you have heard the last two weeks what I shared, uh, I think uh, you would have some clue about, about where to look to buy properties, to buy such undervalued properties, right, okay? Um, last week's topic was actually uh, where to find properties that are undervalued by 300,000, okay? The first three words are different, right? Where to find, right? Where to find. But tonight, I changed the title a little bit. How to spot properties, okay? How to spot properties. So, um, just a quick recap in case you have forgotten about what I um, shared about last week, right? Um, I talk about resale market and new launch market, right? So the thing is, what is similar and what is different? So let, let's look at the similarities first very quickly for those, uh, for the benefit of those who, 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 um, who did not follow us last week or last two weeks, right? Similarity between resale market and new launch condo is that um, the conclusion is that you do not expect to rip off a seller by, you know, expecting them to sell you undervalued by 300,000. So, for example, if the property costs 1.2 million or 1.5 million, right, in the market, whether you're buying from a seller, uh, existing seller, right, in the resale market, or you're buying from a developer, you don't expect the seller or the developer to give you uh, such a big discount, like 300,000, right, okay? So, that is a similarity for both the resale market and the new launch market. 
for the specific reasons why resellers as well as um, this uh, developers are not going to give you such big discounts, right? Go and see my, you know, uh, go to my PSF Real Estate Academy uh, page and then you can scroll to the one or two weeks, right, uh, before today and you'll be able to see all the recordings, right, okay? Everything, all the explanations are there as to why resellers as well as um, developers are not going to give you, uh, or unlikely going to give you such big discounts, right? So, as I continue, just let me um, see who, who is on board with us. Oh, Tony, Tony, nice to see you. William, uh, John, Leslie, right? So, there's a few names I see here, okay? So, uh, let's, let, let's continue, right? So, what is the difference between uh, the resale market, a property that you can buy from the resale market and from a developer, right? So, the difference is that, the different thing is that, Okay, the main difference is that if you buy a resale property, most likely, most likely your price appreciation will be quite, uh, quite, quite, quite difficult in the next maybe five to seven years, right? Okay, whereas if you buy a new project from a developer, it is more likely that you can enjoy substantial, more substantial capital appreciation, right? Again, this is just a conclusion. If you want to find out exactly why this is so, right? Okay, go and refer to last week's um video, right? So essentially, last week's topic is about where to find undervalued properties by 300,000, right? Where? So between a resale market and a new launch market, I think the answer is quite obvious, right? Okay, you have to probably, the chances of buying a, an undervalued property from a developer is higher than if you go to the resale market, right? Then last week, where I ended off is really about this, you know, um, paradigm shift that a lot of buyers like yourself need to adopt, right? Because a lot of times, you know, we just want to, um, as you can see from the right example, you want this. Means to say that if the property is $1 million, right, $1 million, you expect to go to a resale market or go to a developer and they give you a big discount, like one two hundred thousand, right? You buy this kind of price from them, right? So you feel very happy, right? Immediately you get, you know, such a big discount. But it is almost impossible that you are going to find these kind of sellers in the market, right? So, yes, I know that a lot of us want to, you know, want this, right? One million, you can buy 800,000, but really the paradigm shift is that you need to look at it from another point of view is that you need to accept what is actually a more realistic scenario, which is, okay, you buy a property at maybe $1 million, which is the market value, is okay, right? But you can ascertain, you deem this property as having a lot of, or you know, very significant capital appreciation, maybe two to three hundred thousand dollars in the next few years to give you that, you know, that 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 profit, right? So it is really a, a reset of the mindset that that don't don't expect so much to go out there today to buy something and a seller, be it a resale seller or a developer, give you a huge discount, twenty to thirty percent, right? But instead, um, have the mindset that it's okay if you have done your homework and if you buy a property that is. Uh, of good value, right? Later, I'll explain what is good value, right? Okay. So if you buy a property with good value, then I think the long term, not even long term, maybe we're talking about mid term, four to five years, right? Four to five years, the appreciation can potentially give you that maybe 200,000 or 250,000, right? So this is where we end off last week, right? So, um, okay. So um, this is just a quick recap of what I spoke about last week, right? So today, really the, the, the essence is the key, the key thing that I want to focus on is really how to spot this property. Since, okay, Colin, you tell me that, okay, I, I hear you, that you say that um, potentially we need to change our mindset, right, uh, and accept that, okay, it's okay to buy a market value and look for properties with capital appreciation potential. And you also mentioned that, okay, in the new launch market, it's more likely to find such properties. Again, the explanations are in the last two weeks video, right, okay? So can you tell me exactly how do I spot such properties? Okay, because today we are talking about the new launch universe, right? How many new launch projects are there in Singapore? I think easily, I think about 100, 100. or even more than 100, yeah. right? So there is quite a big number. And most people only have one bullet. One bullet means that you only have money to buy one property, right? So you want to make sure that the that property that you're going to buy is going to be the best, if not one of the best. Okay. So the thing is, how do we spot these properties? Yeah. Okay. So Colin, you know, thanks for, for for that. So I think the question in everybody's mind right now is, which 
are the ones that we can look into. But I think more importantly, before we even ask that question, we need to know um, what are the you know potential pitfalls that we must avoid. What are the mistakes that we must avoid at all costs? Are you able to you know share some of uh, these mistakes that we have to be cognizant of? Yes, uh, Colin Go. Uh, thanks for highlighting that. I think. I think rather than straight away plunging into you know how to spot an undervalued property, I think a more a more um, uh, I think a holistic a holistic yeah holistic mm -hmm. way is to share with you some bad mistakes which I see people always do yeah. right in the past because I've been um, I've been doing a lot of seminars for education programs for property investors and home buyers and sometimes. Really, I mean, I have to say that I am also puzzled by some of the decisions they make, right? And I'm going to share with you what are some of these things that I always see and hear in the market. Yeah, right? please do. So please I will, do. yes. Please okay, do that. So please I, do will, that. I think we are really you know, looking forward to those mistakes. Okay, great. I'm, I'm very happy to share as well, right? So I also hope that, you know, you can, you can um, um, think and reflect whether are you also subconsciously, you know, committing such mistakes, whether we have bought a property already or if we are going to buy something. Right. So the thing is, um, altogether, there are four mistakes, four big mistakes that buyers always make when they come to buy a new property. Right. Again, today, the focus is on new properties. So I will just talk about new properties here. Right. So what's the first mistake that buyers make? Okay. The number one most common mistake is this thing called the future transformation fallacy, right? So if you're not sure what this fallacy means, what the meaning of this word means, is a flawed reasoning, flawed reasoning, right? So what am I trying to say here? Means that you are buying a property based on future expectation, right? Future expectation means to say that, okay, for example, if you know that this place is going to um, be transformed into something better in the future, Right, because you have read the master plan, or you have, uh, you have, you know something is going to happen, right? And you buy a new project in that place, and the main selling point of the new project is because this thing is transforming. That's why you go and buy this project, right? I think this is one of the most common mistakes, right? That a lot of buyers make. Okay, if you want specific examples, I will, um, I will, I, I will, I will give you, right? I will give you here, okay? Now, number one, um, I think you can see the, the, the small little picture there, right? What is this picture? If you look closely, right, this is about the, the Great Southern Waterfront, right? Great Southern Waterfront. So ever since, uh, you know, our Prime Minister spoke about this um, in 20, I think it was more than five, five to eight years ago, right? Five to eight years ago, right? Um, there have been a lot of interest and speculation on how how much potential there is right if you buy a property let's say in Tanjung Baga or even Pasir Panjang because Pasir Panjang the court is going to move away right mm -hmm. so how much potential there is right so and if you recall I think it was 2018 or 2017 one of the national day rallies again you no know, our prime minister Lee Hsien Long spoke about this great southern waterfront again right and again the kind of excitement and the interest, right? You know, it, it reached another peak, right? A lot of agents were using this to sell properties. Like, for example, what are the properties located around this area? Like, for example, One Pearl Bank, Avenue South, or even some properties along West Coast, right? So, so the danger is, okay, what is what, what is the problem with associating future transformation with a property that I'm going to buy today? Nothing wrong, right? Because ultimately, you know, we all want we have transformation so that our properties can can be the value can go up right now the, the danger is this you must understand that future transformation take many many years to come about right and by the time uh, that future transformation really take place uh, right your property maybe you have to wait five years at least minimum five years right? even talking about 10 to 20 years here right for that thing to happen if you think about southern waterfront today Tanjung Paga Today is 2030, 20, sorry, 2020. I give you 10 years, I give you 10 years, right? If today is 2030, would that be a big change? I'm not sure, right? Because the government already told you, yes, this is a grand plan for the, for the southern part of Singapore. 
But they also say that I'm going to take the next 20 to 30 years to do this, right? And it's a long time. After 20 to 30 years, maybe, I don't know, the, your property may start to depreciate in price and all these things already, right? I just deviate off a bit. I give you a very, very good parallel example, right? If any one of you have bought a property, okay, a property, not in Singapore, but in Iskandar, okay, Iskandar, Malaysia, you will know what I'm talking about. Okay, think about your own experience, right? When was the when was the hottest period for Singaporeans going to Malaysia to buy Iskandar property, right? Twenty ten to about twenty thirteen, like that. Correct. Around 20, 2010 to twenty thirteen. After 2013, nobody went in already, right? Then they attracted all the China buyers, right? So before that, well, well, before Singaporeans went in, Singaporeans actually were the second wave, right? The first wave were the Middle Eastern people, right? The Dubai and the Middle Eastern people, right? But, and then the financial crisis struck, they got no money, so Malaysia came and looked for us, right? So 2010 to 2013, a lot of Singaporeans went in to buy Iskandar properties, right? So what was the grand thing, big thing they sell to us? Oh, you know, Iskandar is five times the size of Singapore, we're going to do this, do that, do this, do that. And you bought a property in 2010 to 2013. Now it's already 2020. What has happened? You ask yourself, what has happened? Yes, they have this grand plan to do all these things, but but has it have, have you seen any appreciation in your property value? If you have a property in Iskandar, you will know what I'm talking about. Right. Okay. So this is the thing which I'm talking about. Anyone can sell you a big, big, big dream, a big grand vision about how I'm going to transform this place, this piece of land, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, whether that thing comes to fruition or not, and how many years it's going to take to come to realize that big grand, you know, picture, I tell you, it's going to be probably decades, decades, right? Sure, your property price will go up, but I ask you one question. If you can make this 200,000 or 300,000 in five years, why would you want to wait like 20 years to make this money? Correct or not? Right. So this is the kind of you know, uh, this is the one of the most common mistakes, buying based on future promise, right? And honestly, Great Southern Waterfront is not just the only example, okay, right? So today, there's actually a few new launches along this stretch, right? And a lot of them are using this as a potential buying kind of reason for you to buy, right? Okay. Now, second example, if you see this small little picture there, this is actually Jurong East, Jurong East. Again, I think in the last 10 years, a lot of things happened to Jurong East, right? We have got a, a hotel there, we have got a shopping center, and we have got so many things there in Jurong East, right? So what is the what is the message here? Is that, okay, Jurong East, uh, right, is very interesting. Maybe I just pull this thing over so you can see us, right? And at least write a bit of things, right? Write a bit of things, okay. The whole big grand picture about Jurong East uh, being the second commercial hub uh, only started around uh, I think about 10, 8 to 10 years ago 8 to 10 years ago, right? Okay, so Colin, um, Colin sorry, uh, let yeah. me unshare your, your screen first so that we can see what you're going to write down there, alright? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you unshare already, is it? Yes, I did that. Okay, thank okay. So, so can I continue? I can yeah, continue, yeah, uh, please. Uh, can, uh, okay. So Jurong East, uh, Jurong East, you see, if, do you know uh, Lake, one of the property, Lake Front, yeah, Lake Front Residences, okay, Lake Front Residences, just let me write here, Lake Front, make sure you can see, uh, okay, Lake Front, right, Lake Front Residences, okay, this one was launched around 2010, before the whole big, big plan about transforming Jurong, right, 2010, at what kind of price, right, 800 to about 1,000 PSF, right, Okay, so when it TOP, right, when it TOP, the price, the price went up to, TOP was about 20, 20, uh, 13 or so, right, the price was about 1200, right, 1200, 1200 PSF, okay, right, then the big picture about the whole Jurong being the next CBD came about, right, again, government, again, said a lot of such things, uh, right, so people get excited, so, Immediately after the whole attention was on Jurong, what was the next property that was launched? Lake View, right? Lake View, Lake View. This one was launched in around uh, 2015, right? For a price of about one, about one three, right? 
1300 plus PSF. I'm talking about one bedroom here, one bedroom here, okay? 1300 plus PSF, right? So the thing is that, unfortunately, uh, after Lakeview was launched, uh, there was actually another condo, Lake Grand, right? Was launched in 2016, right? Lake Grand, right? 2016. About, also about the same price, 1003, 2004. Okay, right. So today, fast forward to 2020, uh, what are we seeing here? Is that the whole Jurong transformation story, uh, actually, I would say, I would say it's actually uh, below expectation. The performance is actually below expectation, right? It's not really Singapore's fault, to be honest, right? Because what Singapore did, what we can do for that place already, right? We built hotel, we built hospital, we built so many things there, right? Shopping malls there, right? But a lot of people were expecting, oh, you know, the Jurong Lake District to be transformed into the, a very beautiful and very, you know, a lot of things to happen around the lake, around, around, around the waterfront, right? You've got new residential, new hotel, new offices, but today, it's still nothing, right? And also, the big promise about the HSR, the high-speed rail from Kuala Lumpur all the way to Singapore, because of the of Malaysian side, also got postponed, right? So, all these actually affected that place here, there, such that those people who bought Lake View, if they bought Lakeview in 2015, right, based on the big vision about what Jurong is going to become, right, today I can tell you they are disappointed because they bought at 1300 plus those days, right, today their value hardly go up at all, didn't really go up, right, it didn't even hit above 1006, right, maybe $100, right, even for Lake Grand is, is about, about there. So the thing is, the second second thing about, about this um, buying based on future promise, right, can be seen very clearly in this example here, right? That I'm not saying Jurong will continue to do poorly, right? But it's just that I think to a lot of people, it didn't, it didn't really match up to the expectation that 2013, 2014, we have such high hopes. And you really see a lot of things happening, right? Maybe I just push this aside, right? You really see a lot of things happening during that time, right? Because there were the, a lot of things were being built, right? And there were big branded shopping centers around, around, Jurong area, Jurong East area, but none other in Singapore, right? Except Orchard, Orchard area. So the thing is, is that, um, I'll just share my, back to my screen again, right? The thing is really, you know, um, for the Jurong story, actually it didn't turn out very well, but moving forward, can they uh, continue to do well? I think, I think it's uh, a, a big question. We do not know, okay? We do not know, uh, but, what about those people who bought Lake View back in 2015? I think they got a problem here. Okay, I think they got a problem here. Um, how can I, let me see, how can I put this to full screen? Share that? No, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's back to full screen. Okay, so those people who bought Lake View uh, in 2015, uh, I think they got a problem here because uh, now it's already five to six years already. And typically for properties to perform, uh, for properties to per perform, they need to perform within the first seven to eight years of their life. And now it's already almost gone already. And still has not, you know, Lakeview has not really gone up in value. So very soon now uh, it will be forgotten and become a stale, stale resale property. That's the reality, right? So for those people who bought Lakeview really trying to capture the success or the big dream of, you know, the Jurong transformation, uh, I think I think most of them are left disappointed. Lah. So that is the about you know buying again, buying based on the future promise, future transformation. Got it. The third, yes, okay. So the third thing is this pile labor. What is this green thing in the middle? Is the movement, the shift of pile labor airbase away from this, you know, the displacement pile labor. So again, when the government announced this during one of the earlier master plan, right, people were excited, especially developers who are selling properties around the Bartley area, the Serangoon area, the Aukang, the McPherson area. So what did they say? They say that, oh, you know, the the air the, the, the uh, air base is going to be removed and and there will be less restriction on height and all these things and this whole place is going to, you know, basically be more be more uh, be more developed in the future. Imagine this big piece of land in green, shaded in green, uh, right? They change into housing, commercial, shopping mall and all these things. This is a big piece of land. But the question is, yeah, I mean, eventually it's going to be gone, but how long is it going to take for this to happen? If you look at the master plan today, the latest master plan, it is still, this color, color hasn't changed, right? Maybe the next one, five years later will change, like, I don't know, right? But today it's still like this. So you're talking about how many years later, I do not know, right? Next one. 
if you see this little newspaper article here, okay, new, newspaper article here, um, you see that the headline, aerospace industry, right? Aerospace industry. So what am I trying to say here is that a lot of, again, a lot of times uh, when developers try to sell you properties or even their property agents, right, try to sell properties, they will try to pull in all these things to make, you know, to, 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 um, to justify, you know, the kind of price they are selling or maybe, you know, uh, 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 make you more attracted to buy the property. So this aerospace industry is in Silita area, the Silita Air Base area. So yes, government has gazetted this place to be an aerospace hub, right? But the thing is that, um, is aerospace even a big industry in Singapore, right? So if you have studied the like the like the GDP of Singapore, right? Aerospace aerospace related services are only take up about I think less than five percent of our overall GDP, right? And where where are the properties that are riding on this so called this this big 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 um big um big claim about you know this aerospace industry is going to bring you a lot of buyers, a lot of tenants, and all these things, right? Is really those properties that are being sold in Yishun, for example, I remember Symphony Streets, right? Even North Park Residences, right? And some of those in Sengkang, right? Sengkang, like maybe High Park Residences and maybe some of the ECs there, right? So, so again, I think one of the big mistakes is that a lot of times um, we see developers or, you know, agents putting up such um, transformation, right? Future transformation, the potential of how big it's going to be, right? But I think it is a very dangerous thing to do, as I have shared with you that it will take many, many years for it to happen. Or in the case of Lakeview, the whole thing sort of, sort of like started and then stopped. And now it's like, I don't know what's going to happen, right? So the thing is, um, do not buy properties based on such future promises, okay? That's the number one mistake, right? A lot of buyers make, okay? What is the second most common mistake that a lot of buyers, when they buy, new properties uh, they make. Okay, they make this thing called product feature, right? They buy simply based on product feature. And what are product features? Product features are things such as, for example, or oh, the developer give you some, uh, you know, um, smart home feature, because now there's a lot, very big in the technology and all these things. So they give you some maybe smart home features, maybe through a handphone, you can control the aircon, you can close your main door, you can, you can open the door for the pet to come in and all such stuff, like, right, okay? Or they may tell you, or oh, my 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 architectural design is designed by the world we now architect, right? Or they may tell you, oh, I got a lot of landscaping, a lot of greenery, a lot of all these blah 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 kind of things, right? So everything here is based on product features, right? So are product features good or no good? Of course, if you can, if the product, I mean, if the price is right, you go and buy, it's okay, right? But increasingly, I see so many, uh, so many, uh, so many properties are uh, trying to out. Oh, outperform their competitors, their other projects, right, by by upping the state, right? So last time, there's no such thing as what smart home feature. One handphone, you download the app, you can control everything in the condo, even your home. No such thing, right? But lately, in the last two to three years, we started to see developers coming out of this kind of thing, right? So is it necessary? Up to you. If you really like this kind of thing, then you go and buy it. But again, the thing is, at what kind of price are you paying? Does it justify or not? So I give you some examples here. So, for example, this condo that was being launched somewhere in Singapore, I will not say where, right? So, the thing is, um, these are the 10 reasons why you should buy this condo, right? So, if you look through carefully, carefully these 10 reasons, uh, right? You notice that a lot of them are relating to uh, a greenery, uh, facing the landed property, unblocked view, and stuff like that, right? But honestly, um, if you are, I'm assuming you're buying an investment property, to make money because today we are talking about undervalued properties means you want to make money right so investment consideration is the most important one here right so the thing is um are such things important for you if the price is right as i say you can consider consider that right but i think um doesn't sound very relevant to me what i'm looking for right and another example so this property freehold property in district 10 right so the developer tell you all these things below right freehold landed on clave and then few minutes drive to MRT schools and all these things. Again, you know, is it, I don't know, is it, is it, is it very important, right? Um, you have to decide for yourself because honestly, you can have all these things, fantastic, right? But you pay sky high prices, will you still buy? I don't know, up to you, 
right. Another example. Another example here, the last example here, right, okay. So this freehold condo along Thompson Marymount area, right. So look at the four things they, they the developer comes up with uh, all these reasons that you should be buying this, this, this property here, right. After you look at it, I, I mean, my, my feeling is that does it sound everything like very similar, right? The thing, the first thing I get, right, when I read this kind of thing, uh, is really, you know, I am telling myself, honestly, where in Singapore, I'm not near an MRT. Where in Singapore, am I not near a bus stop? Where in Singapore do I take, you know, where I have to travel like two hours to reach somewhere, right? Then obviously, my point is, you tell me all these things are, uh, is really not the kind of things I'm looking for. Again, I'm an investor, you must understand, from an investor mindset, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for, right? Okay, this kind of you know product features selling to me, uh, honestly, to me, to me la, right? I'm just saying for myself, uh, I cannot say for the rest of the people, just for myself, right? Okay, I don't find much value in it to be honest. But a lot of times you look at the brochure for new new condos, right? Always they talk about this kind of thing, right? I give one very good example, right? I will not name the project, but today there are a few properties being sold as you know directly next to a bus interchange or MRT, right? Okay. They are called integrated developments, right? So the thing is, you look at their price, uh, I can tell you it's quite high. It's quite high. So convenience, yes, definitely there, right? Okay. Everything is there, amenities is there, but will you pay that kind of money to, to buy a property there? If you like the convenience for own stay, then by all means go and buy. But for own stay, the consideration is a bit different already. Versus if you're buying for investment, then really investment is that, is that every you know every dollar you save here can be your potential capital acquisition next time on yourself. Okay, so this is the second mistake which a lot of people make, right? Buying based on product features. Okay, got it. I think uh, Colin, you know, uh, we talked about the first common mistake, which is uh, on very future uh, transformation plans that will take a long time to happen. The second mistake is really on the product features. And I think you brought up a pretty good point that if it's for the own stay, then maybe you know uh, what you are looking at is different from an investor point of view. But even for all own stays, right? I mean, uh, do you really need to forego the prospect of making some money in the future? I think if we can look at both at the same time, that will be a bonus also, right? So yes, I guess definitely. you know that is something that we have to look into. Now, you know, right, I think right. you gave really, really good examples down here, but I think we are really short of time right now. We are about 35 minutes in already. Uh, I don't know whether you have any other common mistakes to put up. If you have, maybe we we'll go through a little bit faster on this okay. mistake. So we have sure. to devote a little sure. bit more time on yes. the uh, yeah, examples. Yeah, okay. So uh, for, the, for the benefit of everybody, right, we actually do this Facebook live session uh, uh, since uh, three, three, four weeks ago during this circuit breaker time. And actually we tell ourselves every every week we do once, right, okay? I'm just going to share 30 minutes. <laughs> 3 zero, 30 minutes and then we cut, right? But then after, I mean the first episode we did already overrun by 15 minutes. We, we talked about 45 minutes. And then the last two weeks we talked like more than an hour, right? So um, this tonight, we will end by 10.30, right, okay? To be, you know, to not want to keep you too long. And also I get very tired like, talking so much, right, okay? Even though I'm a trainer myself. So we'll try to cut everything by 10.30. If we cannot finish, right, then we'll talk. We'll continue next week or something like that, right? Okay. So um, the most common mistake which a lot of people make, right, is that they buy based on developers discount, right? Which I call the discount trap, right? What is this thing? For example, uh, for example, right? No discount, one million dollars, okay, right? Then they give you thirty thousand dollars discount, right? Thirty thousand dollars discount, but they raise the price to $1.05 million. You get my point? Right. So you think that, oh, no discount, I don't want to buy. But you only pay $1 million, right? Then they suddenly give you 30000 discount, right? What well, you think, wow, it's such a good deal. How much? Oh, $1.05 million. So I minus 30000 I still pay uh, $1.02. But they give me discount, which is good, right? So you go and buy, right? So this is the typical kind of discount trap, right? Now, um, there's nothing wrong for... Uh, for developers to give discount, right? If the discount you really feel is genuine, it is good, it really helps you, right? Then by all means, go and take, right? But again, I'm coming from the point of investment angle, right? If the discount can allow me to really lower my 
my my purchase price then i think it is really helpful right so in this case here this condo the developer is giving a discount not really a discount they call it the same price same price top 10 floors top 10 floors so this condo maybe let's say 40 stories 40 stories right so maybe the first 20 stories already sold already right so they are giving discount at the same price for level 31 to 40. so level 31 to 40 everything is at 1.18 million right so obviously the buyer will buy the top floor first if they are going to pay 1.18 why i take the 30th 30 story because as you know the higher you go the more expensive it gets right so obviously if i'm the first buyer in the queue i will take the top floor or the top one or two floors right and then slowly slowly as the top floors are being sold it will come down come down until the last buyer maybe buy the 30 or the 31st story right so the thing is um should is it attractive to you or is it should you take this right again think about this the whole building of 40 stories right okay if you buy today at 1.18 million even i give you 1.18 million at the 39 story 39 39 story right you think you got a good deal right because you know all everything is at the same price yes you may have got a good deal versus your neighbor who is on the 30th floor or 32nd floor right but what about those people who bought on the fifth floor sixth floor 10th floor 15th floor right definitely they paid lower than you so again if you're buying for investment right why you want to spend 1.18 million to get such a high floor unit even though they give you they tell you that everything up there the, the top 10 floors are all the same price because your neighbor below right on the 10th floor maybe they spend only uh 950,000 right to buy the same size because the same spec right, usually the layout is the same for, for a tall condo building right meaning you say that the size and the layout everything the same for the same stack right so you actually pay more than your neighbors downstairs and my question to you is is it necessary right because you paying more right does not mean that next time you can rent for a higher price does not mean that you can sell for a higher price too right we have seen so many examples that people who bought on the second floor third floor fourth floor are able to sell at a huge 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 profit that the middle and upper floors owner are not able to do it right so this is another mistakes a lot of um, buyers of new properties they make right by going for discount right so how do you know whether a discount is genuine or not honestly it is quite difficult for you to check right unless unless you have access to the historical okay what is the price trend how much did my below neighbors bought the property but right? unless you have got this kind of information now right so then you can check and see oh are you paying a high price or okay price relative to your neighbors in the whole project right so if you do not then you probably have to um, find some ways to access this kind of information because developers are not going to tell you and they can change their price anytime right so for me is i paid for this subscription so almost i think all the condos in singapore i have access to that's why i know how much is a reasonable price i'm i'm, I'm okay to pay for let's say for investment right got it okay the fourth mistake and the last common mistake right which a lot of people make is this thing called i don't know how to call it lah. <laughs> i just call it yeah, anyhow buy right. <laughs> anyhow buy so what is anyhow buy anyhow buy means uh, you can be committing any one of the three previous mistakes right maybe one of the three previous mistakes or maybe a few of the previous three mistakes which i've highlighted right but really anyhow buy uh, a lot is driven by emotions emotions right especially um i would say um positive emotions positive emotions right meaning to say that you walk to a um, show flat and then you see something nice you on, originally you have no intention to buy right maybe your house where you stay right next door on a piece of empty land you see a show flat right and then a new condo is going to be built not too far away from the house and out of curiosity you go and visit the show flat on uh, let's say a saturday afternoon right so nothing better to do you just can cc look look and then when you go in and cc look look right the things you see and the things you hear right after you come out you feel like buying already right and then eventually you go and buy a property that property that the, the one you saw right so this again i call it emotional buying because honestly you how sure are you that the one the one and only one you saw right is the so-called the the best one or the better ones in the market right because your 
your whole psychology is you are driven by 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 a control by emotion during that you you have this you after you see the show right you have this very strong desire that you really want to buy that thing right that is the kind of so called anyhow buy right I give one very good example so um, before I show you the example here on the screen all right I will tell you a story right so last September last September right um, this person whom I just got to know like one week right. Uh, over 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 social media lah. So he knows that I'm doing some property kind of uh, staff advisory, right? So he 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 shared with me what was his property situation, right? So he has sold his HDB, right? And then he has bought a condo, a resale condo for own state under the husband's name, okay, right? Then so that is already done already. The husband already bought this resale condo. They are staying there, okay. Then the wife has no property, and the wife can go and buy a, an investment property, right, for rental. Okay, so sounds like a good plan. So that was the point of time that I I got to know uh, the husband, right. So, um, so we agreed to meet the following week after we talk on the phone the following week, right. We we are um, supposed to meet, right. Meet for what? He want to ask me, okay, if my wife buy an investment property, which do you think is good to buy, right? So that was the intention of the meeting the following week, right? So, um, on a Tuesday, Tuesday, one Tuesday in September, right? This person, this husband, um, contacted me, right, and want me to give him some advice, right, on some properties that he is looking at, right? So, the the. Um, the time we contacted was on a Tuesday, I think about 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Right. So I sensed that he was a bit urgent to want to meet me. So I said, okay, we don't meet, we don't meet, we don't meet next week, right? Let's meet this Thursday. That means two days later, this Thursday, right? So so after that, I put down the phone, and then he was like, okay, meet next Thursday. Uh, meet this Thursday. That means two days later. Then within a very short time, he came back to me again. He came back to me, but right? he said. This is really urgent, right? Okay, I need to meet you before Thursday. I was wondering, wow, you so kenjang or what, uh, right? I also don't know why. Want to meet me before Thursday? Thursday was only two days away, and you want to meet me like what? Tomorrow, Wednesday, right? So he said, okay, Wednesday, meet Wednesday. Said, okay, okay, meet. Let's meet Wednesday tomorrow, right? Then after a while, within like another five to ten minutes, he contacted me again. He tell me, can I cannot wait? Can I meet you? Today, today is Tuesday, you know, already 5 p.m. already. Today, what? Today you want to meet what time? At night, 10 p.m. Uh. 10 p.m. also can, no problem. 10 p.m. So in the end, we really meet at 10 p.m. Right? At a nearby shopping mall, uh, right? At the I think the Starbucks or something, right? Okay. We met at 10 p.m. that same day. Right. And why do you think he was so urgent to meet me? Right. I'm gonna show you what he wrote to me in the afternoon. Right. So this was what happened. The message came. 5.48 p.m., right? This was the message he sent to me, okay? To be frank, my wife committed the 5% last Saturday under agent persuade. We have not thought through enough. She chose the premium stack and now we are thinking whether to change to other stacks. Worst case, we may not exercise the OTP. Really need a third party advice now. Not sure how to compensate you. Okay, these are not important, okay? So, Really, the urgency for him uh, to meet on the same day, uh, Tuesday, uh, we thought WhatsApp was on 5.40, almost 6 p.m. already, right? He was so urgent to meet me on this day at night, right? It's because uh, just a few days ago, that Saturday, right? What happened was that, this was what I found out when I met him that night, right? Last Saturday, I mean that Saturday, right? He and the wife, uh, nothing, you know, nothing to do, lah. Uh, so on the afternoon, Saturday afternoon, they went to see one of the show flats, right? One, one of the show flats. Uh, and they went into the show flat with no intention to buy, with no intention to buy. They just want to go and see, see, look, look understand more only, right? And then went in, I don't know how much time they spent there. In the end, the wife bought a unit under her name by putting a 5% deposit, okay? So he was so um, so urgent to meet me uh, is because... Uh, you need to exercise this option uh, within two weeks from that Saturday. But if not, uh, then you will forfeit most of the money. Right. So he wanted to ask me whether the property which the wife booked on Saturday, is it a good buy or not? Okay. Right. So that was the urgency. 
So obviously you are asking, you will be thinking, which property, yeah, uh, right? Uh, uh, I, I don't think I want to say the name, lah, right? Okay, but uh, I can just tell you generally, you can guess yourself, right? Okay, it is in the central to eastern part of Singapore, right? And when I look at the price, uh, oh my god, right? You bought at 1,700 PSF for a property in the central, central means not the, no, the, the not the CCR region, nah, right? Central means Serangoon, uh, Bali, uh, Otong Pase. Uh, those kind of area, right? Okay, so central, right? City fringe, right? central, right? right? Central, really the map right? of Singapore, central, right? Central to eastern part, right? So you bought this property at 1,700, 1,800 PSF. I was like, oh my God, right? If I were you, I don't know how you can even buy this, well, honestly, right? So when I, when I saw this property, I asked him one question, okay? Uh, do you, you, you bought this property at 1,008 PSF, uh, okay. Uh, do you think this is a reasonable price to pay? He said he does. He said, he told me some other things like, oh, in future, there's going to be future transformation, the MRT is nearby and blah, 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 all those things, okay. I told him just one thing only, right. The developer has to sell you at 1,008 PSF. Uh, it's because the price they bought a piece of land, uh, wait, 1,001 already. 1001, how to save money. 1001, I construct and develop. I bought a piece of land, 1001. I built my condo, but plus my profit margin. I sell at 1008. It's reasonable, right? But for you, uh, you have the choice to choose whether you want to buy or not. And this is what I call anyhow buy, right? You walk in the show flat. People walk in the show flat. And then just by driven by emotions, obviously, he himself said in this message, you can be yourself, right? My wife committed the 5% last Saturday under agent persuade, okay? No need me to explain more. Huh? Obviously, the agent said a lot of good things huh, about the property. Like that's why the wife or the husband went to agree to put the 5%. Right. So after we we talked, right? So we continued the WhatsApp, right? So he said, yeah, we worry we bought the wrong project. Right. So I asked him, so what? If you meet me, then what? If I say don't buy, then what are you going to do? We already paid the 5% already. So are you going to like withdraw and lose part of the deposit? Right. So then he said, yeah, like, if this is the worst case, then then so be it. Like. Right. Okay, so the last thing he said with, is that we feel this project of potential, but need to hold on longer after TOP. Now again, uh, very interesting, you know, right? If you understand the sentiments here, we feel this project of potential, but need to hold on longer after TOP. What is he trying to tell you? What is he trying to tell you? Think about it, right? Means, uh, I can tell you blatantly, uh, okay, blatantly, right? Means, uh, he, after he put a 5% on Saturday, he realized that he has overpaid for a property which actually shouldn't cost 1,008 PSF for that location, right? So to in order to comfort himself, uh, he said, okay, never mind, la, I wait long term, la, never mind your potential one, la, it's okay, I wait long term. La. That's what he's trying to say here. You know why uh, if you invest in stock market, uh, everybody, if you buy, let's say, DBS share today, of course, you want the next next two weeks of uh, the share price work and then you can sell ASAP, right? Okay, but what if the share price go down? Then you tell yourself, I ah, never mind, I'm a long-term investor, but I can hold. You know, let, let, let's not, let, let's be honest, lah, right? Let, let's be honest about this, right? I felt that he has made a bad purchase, right? But he probably is trying to justify, lah, not wasting the part of the money, mon money by, you know, by, by, by changing the choice and then just sticking with his option. Right? That's why he said that, okay, we just go along with this, right? So in the end, what happened? Okay, I met him 10 p.m. I told him this property I won't buy is overpriced, right? I won't spend $1,800 PSF on this location, right? I would rather take my $1,800 PSF to buy something else, which I think got more potential, right? So your, your question is, okay, did he change in the end? No, he didn't change. He stuck with his decision, right? So it's okay. I mean, it's like I try my best to, to help if people feel that they... They, they want to do it other ways, then it's okay lah, because it's their money anyway. Right? But I'm just telling you, this is a very good example of anyhow buy. Anyhow buy means uh, I can guarantee you, if today I can call this person again, I ask him, so uh, if that's Saturday, uh, you didn't buy this property, right? would you have bought something else? If I give you a time machine now for you to go back to 17th of September 2019, right? that day when you bought this property, pay the deposit, right? would you still go ahead and buy? I can guarantee you, he will say no. Confirm say no, right, okay? So if this project is really so good from day one until today, uh, right, 
I'll be so confident, right? Later, I'm going to show you one project, right? I promise you, I'm going to show you, right? Later on, right? So really, these are the four, four things which people make commonly, the mistakes, right? So if I just recap back the slide, because I want to keep pushing this, this, this is whiteboard here, lah, right? So, so more troublesome, right? So I just refresh you through here, lah. Number one common mistake, buying through, buying because of future expectation, right? And a lot of times, this kind of expectation may be very risky, right? It may eventually happen, but it is going to be very, very long before this thing can happen, right? And meanwhile, right, your property is like maybe left in no man's land, something like Lakeview, that kind of situation, right? Number two, buying based on product features, right? Has nothing, not so much to do with price, right? But a lot of times, it's more of a few good factor. Do you really need this few good factor? Probably not for investment property, right? Number three, buying based on discount, right? Discount, a lot of times, discount given to you, uh, you have to look deeper, right? Are they really real discounts that, you know, really is like so good that, that, that you really must get it? Or is it another kind of marketing tactic by the developer, right? In fact, actually, I think uh, one or two days ago, there's another project in Singapore, right? The developer is used to set $2 million, $2 million. But now what uh, they're giving $400,000 discount, $400,000 substantial, right? Okay. You can buy a unit there for only $1.6 million, right? So these are typical examples, but long story short, will I buy that project? Right. Uh, I won't, uh, right? I won't, right? Even though they give me $400,000 discount, why? Right? Because after this discount, uh, the price is still very average to me, right? To me, right? So that is my answer. Okay. Last, lastly, last mistake, anyhow buy. Right, like this, this example here. A lot of times driven by, you know, curiosity, and then you don't know, you walk in the show flat, and then you want to really commit to that. Okay, so these are the four common mistakes here. Okay, now. Okay, so, I think, Colin, yeah. you know, really, you've given really a lot of value down here. We are almost out of time already. I think, you know, uh, what is going to happen is this. Uh, we didn't plan this to happen, you know, really. Uh, uh, we, we wanted to share a lot more value, even give examples today. But I think if we continue to do, you know, uh, the next few slides, what will happen is this will extend until 11.30, maybe even midnight. Uh, and, and that's probably why, uh, for those of you who know Colin Lee, you know that he is very passionate in sharing all these things. When he shares an example, he will give you all the substantiating points to make it clear to you and I believe that you got what he says to you already and then you know uh, we have uh, uh, our previous students from uh, Colin and uh, fans from from Colin uh, saying that yes really you know it's very good information in the comments right now but I think what we can do Colin you know uh, maybe we we continue the rest of uh, your advice next week you know uh, because really for the next Five minutes, we probably won't even finish one more slide. What do you think, Colin? I am open. I mean, if I want, if you want me to continue, I can continue, right? Okay, because because honestly, sometimes it's also very hard for me to control the timing, right? Okay, because I know that there's an audience. Of course, it's up to you. I mean, the audience here, right? Okay, if you want to leave, it's okay, right? All this anyway is recorded, right? Okay, um, I'm fine either way, actually, right? So, um, what do you suggest? Because I, if I want to continue on, maybe I will take another. Uh, I don't know, maybe half an hour, probably. Mm. I mean, depending on how much I want to share, you see, right? Okay. I can share less if I want. Right? Maybe, I, maybe, I, 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 I tell you what, maybe we, we do it next week, uh, okay. you know, so that uh, we have a little bit more time to go more in depth. Uh, and, you know, yeah. it's, I, I think it's late already. People might not be able to sustain, you know, for uh, more than an hour. So, I, I tell you what, you know, uh, we put up uh, a poll down here asking, uh, do you want Colin Yi to share some examples of undervalued properties? Uh, overwhelmingly, 100% of you said yes. Yeah, obviously, you know, we really want all these things from him. But uh, if, I mean, if we really want all this information from him, I think it is better for us to devote uh, more time for him to share uh, in more detail rather than really, you know, skirt through and just cover, you know, something in very superficially. I think let's do that. Uh, how about that? You know, okay. Kelvin is saying next yeah, week is yeah. good. Uh, Leslie is saying awesome. I tell you what, Colin, let's do one more show. You know, we didn't ever plan this for have to happen. Uh, we, we actually planned this to be a four four episode series. But I think because of overwhelming demand uh, and uh, really there's so much value to be shared, we, we continue next week. 
Okay, oh. I think I think it's okay, right? Okay, we'll continue next week. Anyway, now it's uh, 10.30 already. So I think maybe some people want to go to bed early or, or they have got things to do, right? Uh, I think I think it's okay, right? We, we can continue next week, right? Hmm. I really didn't expect, you know, the first few slides to take up so much time, right? I didn't know, right? Okay. Uh, but but that, that is my style, right? Like, that is my style. Like this afternoon, I was just uh, sharing with someone, right? Between two properties, condo A and condo B, a new property, right? New projects, condo A, condo B. So he asked me like, three to four questions over WhatsApp. So I I, I, I could, uh, I suggested to him, you know, uh, should, we, uh, should we do a meeting, Zoom meeting and, and things like that. So he said, okay, maybe you can send me the, send me the um, Zoom meeting you record first so I can watch it at my own free time. So I really did a Zoom recording for him, right? And guess what? Guess how long was the Zoom meeting? To answer that three questions. Between condo A, condo B, which one is good? The three questions. Right? Oh, 15 Telling minutes. Condo. 15 minutes? Four zero. Wow. Four zero minutes. So I was I, I was recording on, on my phone, right? and the whole thing take four gig, you know, I didn't even know. <laughs> I recorded on my handphone, and the whole thing, 14 minutes took like four gig, you know, four GB. So I think uh, we, we can do it next week, right? We do it next week. So this week, we'll just call it this session as the three, the four common mistakes, lah. Uh, people when buying new launches, what well, four common mistakes people usually make, right? So next week, we will focus on the more positive examples, right? For example, what is the kind of thing I look out for, right? Having shared with you the four things which I see a lot of people always committing the mistakes which they do, right? What are the kind of four, what, what are the kind of, uh, one or two things I look out for in terms of buying new launches, right? Okay. And um, I think I can uh, share more, more, more examples and more, more details with you. And obviously, I need to go back and Give up my slides uh, because my slides, uh, I need it for. You know, I thought it's tonight, so I just give one one or two examples. But if next week, then maybe I give uh, uh, a bit more substantial examples. All right, so, more examples. So do, you know, next week, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next week, yeah. So more examples, and Colin, I think he won't be hesitant to even name some of the projects down there, which he think you know has good potential, and maybe some that he personally would avoid. So I guess, uh, thank you, you know, so much. For every one of you who has tuned in uh, and stayed with us for the past one hour, really, you know, it's not easy for anyone to be continuing to to just you know listen and listen and listen. But definitely, when it comes to Colin E, uh, he has a lot of value to share, and people would want to continue to stay and watch. Okay, so please come back to uh, PSF Real Estate Academy uh, same time next Wednesday. Uh, and we'll continue with examples of what to look out for and maybe what to avoid, okay? So meanwhile, okay. if you have any questions, feel free to type in the comments box below, or even better, why not engage Colin himself? For those of you who has his WhatsApp number, feel free to, uh, to, to, to WhatsApp him. If you don't, maybe send him a message to PSF Real Estate Academy, who knows? He might even give you a 40 minutes private you know answer through his uh, zoom session you know or through his uh, recording on his phone all right so uh, colin any last things uh, for our audience today okay so thank you very much everyone for um, sharing uh, tonight's session with me so i see a uh, kelvin right i see lynn daniel uh, rachel uh, um, i can't see the rest of the people so thank you very much everyone if i'm not mentioned your name i really appreciate your presence tonight uh, over the last one hour uh, to, to hear my, my, my insights, right? So next week, uh, I will give you some examples on the property, the new launches today, right? Which are the ones that I feel are of better value, right? okay? And which are the ones, maybe one or two, I think they, they, they should be the ones that I will avoid, right? So I will be naming examples, right? okay? This week, because of mistakes, I want to, you know, make certain properties look bad, but next week, I will be really naming the examples that in fact tonight's slide if we continue tonight you will be able to see all these things right but i guess maybe it's good that we do it next week right and trust me the three hundred thousand dollars undervalued properties right that you can potentially earn in the next four to five years is real right i have to emphasize this again right some people think that oh, i'm just you know trying to blow up the numbers and all these things no it is real i'll show you actual transaction that has been that has taken place in the past okay to substantiate this okay so uh thank you very much everyone uh welcome i mean uh really thanks for coming on board tonight i will see you uh, next wednesday 9 30 p.m
Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you again. Bye. Anything, just WhatsApp me. Okay, bye.